What's going on, everybody? This is Corbin, the Serpent Tongue Skip with, and I have very special guests, returning guests, Ren, Marabu, and the Berserkers. How are you guys going today? Yeah, good. It's going great. Good, good man. Good. 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 I'm um last time we didn't have the full band, but today we have the trio, and I'm very excited to finally talk to the band as a whole. Yeah, nice yeah. man. <laughs> Just on the intro there, I almost said, and I'm Rand the Berserker Marvel. <laughs> this is, this is, <laughs> yeah, that, just old habits, I guess. <laughs> I love that. Um, and yeah, we um, thanks to Ren, I'm up two hours earlier. So, fuck you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, nah, good times, good time. <laughs> get two breakfasts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the last time we talked, we talked about. Uh, Sagus, which was the last album before this, and um, since then you guys have had so much pressure, I imagine, to make a new one 99% from me, most likely just hounding you guys non stop. Um, <laughs> it's finally out, so I want to talk about it. So, let's start off with the production side of things from Sagus to now. How long has it taken, um, to release this album, or was it even before Sagus you guys were thinking about this, or tell me the process? Yeah, I, I mean. I'll, I'll shout out on that one. I'm pretty sure I had the idea for this album before I had the idea of Sagas. Um, it, it was like, a, it's a long time coming kind of thing, but a lot of the songs from Sagas, we decided to throw in the mix here and stuff. So it kind of sped up the process in the end. Um, but yeah, we because I suppose we, we had, I put myself on deadlines, you know, it's like, three, four months, and I get itchy. I can't... I, it can't sit still. Oh, man. If, if he doesn't write a song a day, he, he feels as if he's, he's not productive. I swear, I swear, man, right? Uh, uh, Sean's after asking us, uh, United Music Mafia, Big Sean, OG, he's after asking us to put together another track for something else that I can't speak about at the moment. And I was so happy. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I get to sit down and write and record. I was like, you know, happy days. So it's twiddling me thumbs. I know we've, we've, we're so busy and there's not so much going on, but, you know, if I'm not writing something, uh, yeah, just send me to a loony bin. <laughs> <laughs> a berserker bin. <laughs> I think, I think, Ren's, I think Corbin, Ren's, he, he, Ren's always got a bunch of material on the go. And whether it's on an album or not, there's, there's always, you know, 20, 30 songs, ideas left over. And cast myself and put some ideas together too. But when we signed to United Music Mafia in December, that really put a, a, a deadline in place for us. And we, we really had to, to get to work on it pretty quickly. So that kind of helped in a way. Um, yeah, I mean, it was the first, it's the first album on uh, United Music Mafia. And, um, you know, we wanted to make it, you know, in the same vein of what we've been doing, but we wanted to just make it that little bit better. And um, so, you know, Cass made me put more effort into it and uh, it just uh, not rush it as much, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I think it worked. I think it was a good show to take our time with it. I mean, instead of two months, it was four months. <laughs> 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 no, it was longer than that. No, it actually, we, we started it last year, which is crazy. I've never overlapped from one year to the next on an album. It's always been in the same year. Um, I think it was the first single came out in... December yeah. is the first one, like Fenrir and um, Dodd Dodd Sign. Yeah. yeah, double double album. Um, Big Sean released it as uh, like a double. Um, yeah, so it was like, let's let's try and get it before the summertime, and uh, you know we did it. You know, so we're you know what can you say? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I completely understand because it's it's funny. In my head, in my head, and you know, you can ask my girl about this. It's like normally I just over flood myself with too many tasks, reviews, interviews, too much stuff to do, and then I complain about it. But then when I don't have that much work, I go crazy. I'm just like, I need something to do, but then I complain when I get it. <laughs> it's just like you got a fucking head. But it it it's a weird paradox. Have I need something to do, but then I'm always stressed that I have so much to do. It, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's it. But you are mad busy, like you're mad busy, like you know, like we, we talk all the time, and we're just flat out busy. Like the three of us this week, the four of us this week have had so much going on, like crazy amounts of stuff that we've done. 
And uh, I'm proud of us all. Now that we're all here together, I'm like, well done, boys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very productive. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm curious, with the um, was um, was it easy or hard for you guys to agree on like to agree on the to agree on the track list and the order of the songs and all that stuff together? Was it was it a synchronized process or was there a lot of oh no that should go there this should go there kind of thing? It was a long process. Like I remember we had a couple of lists. It was like right these these are gonna be the tracks, and then like it just it gets scratched off as as we go along. I was like no. <laughs> Brian's got a wee diary here, and it's 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 like a diary full of yeah. scratched out lists. And yeah. I, I, I I love lists, you know. Yeah. I, I love a good love list. A list but yeah. he, he's got he's got like three books of lists, <laughs> and, they're all, and they're all songs. And they just they keep a song gets scratched out, and another one gets moved to the yeah. next page, and then next week that gets scratched out and moved to the next page. It's a great, it's a it's a good process. When a new song comes along, though, it automatically becomes your favorite because it's like it's new and it's fresh and. You know, you get to do something that you've never done, maybe if you if you keep progressing and stuff. And uh, yeah, the album did change from the from the very first list of tunes. I'm pretty sure there's only like maybe two or three that were actually on it. And by the time we got to the end of it, I got to listen back to the album at the end, and I was like, I forgot that that song was on the album. Like, you know, I forgot that we chose that one. You know, because there's that many. So, um, but yeah, like. Uh, you know, we like to model ourselves on, you know, the greats who used to write, you know, 30 songs. Like, who who were we chatting about last week? Um, Stone Sour, man. And so they had, like, 30 tracks going in the studio. And, you know, that's the best way to do it. And they just whittle it down. So we tried to be, like, the, the big boys, you know? Because you because we were playing some of these live, too, you know, just after we did the records. We played them live. And playing them live, you get an idea of what's working and better than... You know, this one works better than that one. And this, this one's slightly easier to play. This one's going to fit really well after that song off Al Hallowitz, you know. So playing them live at the same time kind of really helps the whittling down process. Then you want to record it again because you play it live <laughs> and you, you you make it even better <laughs> when you because when, when you take it on on, on the on the, on the stage and uh, you just feel more energy and you start elaborating and, and just tweaking bits and you're like, oh, man. We need to go back in and re-record that at a different tempo. <laughs> I need to put a different solo on that's like extra layers of vocals. And like, I swear to God, if we if we got a chance to go in and re-record um, like a couple of tracks that we said this about from the last three, four albums, we'd have a full new album. Like, you know, like there wouldn't be new songs, but they'd be reworking. So, yeah. you know, maybe somebody, some label will let us do that someday. Maybe Sean. <laughs> yeah. Wait a the greatest hits. <laughs> yeah, they made the greatest, the greatest hits re recorded. <laughs> took them two years to record the original albums, and this one took a month. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so you know, so I'm curious, it, like in your guys' heads, how you know, did you were you guys thinking to yourself, all right, this album has to be different than Sagas, this album has to improve on Sagas, or it has to do things that Sagas that I guess it doesn't have or didn't do is was there a certain was there a certain um idea in your guys heads on how to separate this new album from your former one as far as stylistically or production or sound anything like that yeah i mean like we like to play songs fast and we play them live you know we like to give it a bit more um just a bit more balls a bit more oomph and i was i was hoping my plan was that this album would be that before you know we have to bring it to the stage like it's already there it's already at that you know fast tempo and full balls out rocking um pretty much that's it really like we wanted it because the the album um like Valhalla Waits uh, Sagas and Tales of Ruin are actually like a trilogy you know they're like uh, it's three of us we'll make a trilogy <laughs> of this you know <laughs> um so we like it we've got an album each kind of thing um, but yeah, so we didn't want to deviate too much. We wanted to keep it in the same vein, but you know, just progress a little bit. Like I, I can personally see a big change, a progression from Valhalla Waits to this. Um, so if we keep doing that, like you know, every every year if we release three albums and get better every album, <laughs> I think we'll be doing all right. <laughs> well, 
that is something I noticed about this album. It's a lot, it's a lot um, faster. But it, but the thing is, the, the other thing I noticed compared to Sigus is, in my opinion, there's a lot more, um, as far as the actual sound goes, there's a lot more like kind of Norse Viking sounds going into this than the last one, which I really like because, you know, I'll, because I was just hoping there was more of that because to me, there wasn't, I mean, to me, to me, I would have loved more of that style in Sagas, um, as far as sound goes. And so I was hoping in Tales of Rue that there'll be more. And in this album, you guys just put, you guys put in the perfect amount. Even the first track, halfway through, you guys, you guys, you guys, you know, had that little part with it's like that whatever whatever instrument that is that like kind of breaks it up. It's like it's amazing to listen to, and then and then the song after that. There's just so many moments that sound so kind of folky and Norsey, if that makes sense to me. And I really like the fact that you guys, you know, kind of flourished on those kind of sounds more than you did on the other realm. I think, yeah, I think, I think that just happened naturally as well. Because um, I know Ren had a heart attack when he, when he lost the first version of Fenrir. So uh, when, when we came to do Fenrir for the second time, you know, it was just, let's, let's beat the crap out of stuff. So we, we literally just bang stuff. Hit everything like for it. I, like if anybody that doesn't know the story, and I'm pretty sure you know the story, bro. I um, we we had we literally I had just told Big Sean and United Music Mafia that our first single was ready. <laughs> I went back to listen to it that evening and it was gone. <laughs> the 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 file got corrupted on the hard drive and just just zipped the whole track and scattered pieces everywhere. And I don't know. I really I still to this day I don't know what happened, but. Um, in a big panic, I had to try and piece it together from, you know, different places and then re-record parts and throw stuff down. And it was the, probably the worst experience of my life. Like, because <laughs> it was, um, it was like, we, we knew something was wrong because uh, it wasn't, it wasn't on Facebook for about three hours. And I went, there's something wrong with Red. <laughs> I haven't seen it for three hours. There's definitely something wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my poor miss was trying to deal with me that day. Like, I was like a <laughs> fucking ball. Like, but, um, you know, it, it worked out for the best because we got that. Um, it was only a three minute song originally. And then because of that, we just wanted to put loads of percussion down and hit everything and just like, ah. And then I put a big angry vocal on uh, the, the coming in after that. It's like a bridge. Um, and it was probably the, probably the heaviest vocals on the album, I think, <laughs> because I was so and angry like I was just ah so uh I think it the song turned out better in the end um I mean it's an extra two minutes from what it originally was um but yeah it was uh something I don't want to ever experience again uh I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> but uh the I think that might have sparked then the additional instruments because you know what do we use on this like a harp uh mandolin you know, there's a ukulele in there, and sure, like I was, I was playing the spoons. You probably can't really hear them, but they're on Fenrir at the start. My mom taught me; it was the first instrument I ever learned was how to play the spoons. I don't know if they have it in Australia, man, but literally, you get two spoons, and and you and you crack it off your off your leg, and it's like an instrument, right? <laughs> so that was my mom. It's, it's a real Irish mommy thing to play the spoons. <laughs> So I threw that in there as well, you know. And then and there, yeah. and there is a precedent. There is a precedent in metal because Soundgarden wrote a song called Spoonman. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of their best songs. Great song. Yeah. So the, the spin. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So, like I said, I really appreciate that. Um, the more of the folky influence on this, and you know, I have to say, and when I say this, I I never, and I think anyone who knows me well knows i knows i never i never say this lightly so what so what what i'm about to say is a um like it means like it means i found this album a huge deal for me it's very hard because i don't play instruments it's very hard for me to pick up you know to pick up instruments i mean like sounds in the background clearly because i don't really know the technical terms or anything i don't really know what i'm into listening to but to me the way the drums and the bass worked and like the techniques and the styles used blew me away the same way when i hear led zeppelin because in led zeppelin that's the only band where i can where i can actually point out and hear the drums and the, and the bass and the guitar like you know individually because of how talented 
they work it through. And it was the same here. I, you know, I listened to the album. I'm like, oh, those that drum was um that drum sequence was amazing. That bass sequence was amazing. Obviously, guitar and vocals. So it's like you guys have this perfect harmony that I really haven't heard since Zeppelin to me because because I know I can't. You know, I'm not normally as proficient as hearing things stand out as much as i should but i can with you guys and this just proves how talented you guys are and yeah like all the parts in it were just really amazing from all three of you ah jesus that's a big that's unreal i mean like i know i know man and i i know what if, like me and you are both chatting about zeppelin all the time we're big zeppelin fans same with the boys like and you know that the rhythm section is was always a big big thing for me I, even though i'm a guitar player and a singer um primarily the the rhythm section means a lot to me you know like I, I play both um to a certain degree but I know what's really really important and like the minute I got on on board with these two boys it was just oh lads come on the rhythm section or what like you know so you know it's great it's great for people to notice that because you know usually you know this you know the the average listener or the general listener that's not a musician that's not a drummer it's not a bass player wouldn't really pick up on on um, the wickedness of the bass drums, but sure, that's where all the talent is in bands, really. Anyway, like you know, <laughs> yeah, he's right. John Bonham, John Paul Jones, you know, Robert Plant would be not without them boys, Jimmy Page. Um, so where did the actual um, why choose the name Tales of Room? Interesting. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's um, it it, it was kind of like. Sagas was, you know, all about the tales, all the, the Norse uh, sagas. <laughs> and this was kind of like, because I wanted it to be like a, a, a an album about stories, like it was stories written about like these sagas. So it's essentially just the same title, <laughs> sagas, but it's written differently, <laughs> you know? So just to kind of show that it's still like a lead on, yeah. if that makes sense, from sagas. It's just like... um. I remember we were chatting about Tales of Ruin and it has has two kind of spins to it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it has the, you know, the, obviously it's not spelt like Ruin, like, you know, Tales of Ruin as in things falling apart and going to shit. There's a few elements in that, in the, there's a few tragic stories um, in the songs as well. Um, Sigurd, the Dragon Slayer is one, and um, Holger is another. There's a couple of just, you know, um, sad elements of the the old Norse stories and I, I like the the fact that you you know you could look at the tales of ruin um as like you know the sad element but then the ruins you know you know but it, I think there's I think there's another level I mean it's it's a it's a clever play on words but I think it feeds into the um, the mythology the, tr the tragedy that the Viking you know the Vikings are no longer around you know well, they are but they, they, they kind of as, as a civilization they kind of die out and there's there's something there's something very melancholic about that and I think that that comes into some of the songs you know Bragi is quite quite a, it's quite melancholic you know I think um I think we were trying to capture that kind of feeling of something that's gone missing you know um I think that's what we are as a band in general. We're, we're like a lot of stuff we're trying to bring back or even um, acknowledge, acknowledge for ourselves. And but like, to, like, I don't know, like just remind people that there was a whole other world before all this. You know, we're all so used to technology and our phones and stuff. And just to think, just stop a minute and think about all the ancestors and people that were there before us that made us who we are. And, and run through our veins, you know, like it's it's it's, uh, it's something I'm just like I, I I think about daily all the time. We're yeah. always discussing that stuff, and it's 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 a big part of what this band is. Really, it's it's not it's more I wouldn't say it's a message, but it's like uh, I don't know. No, it's say. not a message. It's just it's like a, I suppose we're not consciously trying to get across. Like we, we're all, all a small part of history, and our prehistory is immense. It's huge. And it's hard to get your mind around it sometimes. And um, I think we're trying to get that across in some of the songs mm. um, in an unconscious way. I think it's not a, it's not a conscious effort; it's a subconscious thing. Yeah. But I think I think it's coming across. There, there's some really nice sad elements in there, you know. And it doesn't yeah. it doesn't all have to be like brand of sacrifice, you know, like motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's good too. <laughs> well, 
I can't wait for you guys. I can't wait for you guys next next album called Viking Journals. Oh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. I like that. Write that down. Write that down. Um, no, no, it's good. Yeah, it, like I said, you can, <laughs> you can hear that. Yeah, you can just hear the authenticity really in this album, and everything is turned up to an eleven, as in. You had Sagas, which is an amazing album in and of itself, and then, I, and then you can just hear like all the level ups you guys did to this, to this with the production, with the instrumentation, with the lyricism, with everything, and it's totally obvious. And I, you know, I, I've listened. To, I swear, I've listened to this album like I swear eight times since it's come out. I'll say about eight. Like I, like I keep going back to it, and I used to keep going back to Sagas until this came out. But it's a funny story. <laughs> It's a funny story because I was hounding for this album daily, I think, at this point. And then when Renz finally sent me an early version, I didn't even end up listening to it because the songs are out of order. <laughs> and I ruined my OCD. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's pretty sad. He, he, he finally gave it to me. And then I, I looked at it, I'm like, nah, I'm going to wait for the real version. Um, yeah, because I, I did it on purpose, like Heron said, because I knew your OCD wouldn't let you listen to it. Like... <laughs> Ah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right. So, have you guys had? Do you guys have any play? Um, have you guys thought about what's as in as far as studio work goes? What's next for the Viking Journals? No. What's next from? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like we do have the material pretty much, don't we? We're, but we're, you know, we're, we're it's only two we're weeks. Busy for the next two months, yeah, so. we, we're busy for the <laughs> next two months. Like, yeah, we have, we have about, um, I don't know, 20, 25 tunes. Yeah. To choose from. Um, it's just, yeah, I suppose it's a matter of when we just, uh, like, we, we could jump into the studio tomorrow and start recording again. But, you know, um, we have some, uh, some small shows coming up here now in September. <laughs> like, uh, I'll keep us busy. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe when we come back leading up to Christmas, I'd like that anyway, because leading up to Christmas, um, I don't know, I think that kind of the the, winter, the darker winter months, I write, I write very differently in the summertime. Like yesterday, uh, I was sitting in here, um, it was the first kind of writing session I had since the new album came out, which is only two weeks. Like it feels like forever, but it's like two weeks. Like, and um, and the fact that you listen to the album eight times in two weeks is pretty pretty badass. Um, that's <laughs> like what is it, every second day or something. Anyway. Um, but uh, so what's the point? So, so yeah, uh, first right in session yesterday, and um. Uh, dude, I did this this morning. I blanked out, or yesterday I blanked out. I can't remember what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> oh, the winter months, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, yesterday I started writing, and, I, and it was all bluesy, and it was all like kind of summery fun stuff, like, <laughs> you know. But like, if it was like a winter month, and it was the exact same time of day, and put me in this room, I'd be writing some pretty dark stuff. Like, so um, I like to do the majority of the album writing, and you know, the later half of the year. Uh, otherwise, it would be too fun, you know. And you know, not wrong with fun songs, like, but you, you know, we, we don't want to end up like being like Green Day or Blink One Eighty Two or something like that, you know, like which could very easily happen because we love punk and we love we love punking it up, and uh, you know, you never know. There could be like a Viking punk album coming out, which you might not be happy about because you're a punk purist, man. You never know. You might you might like Viking punk. <laughs> never tried it, but uh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Henry uh, Rollins just up just up in a Viking suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that would be the Viking journals, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Viking journals, the punk edition. No, yeah. Um, have you guys thought about doing? I mean, obviously, maybe maybe you guys don't have the what's the word the uh, the equipment or or whatever yet. But have you guys thought about doing like a live album? We would love to do that. Um, we actually have uh, Kimo Shatnabo doing something like that. Our, our manager, um, he has some lovely big plans. Uh, I, won't, I won't say anything. Don't don't want really to give his plans away. But it's it's something special anyway, in a, spe- a special venue, and uh, it definitely is something that he's wanting to do. Um, I'd love it. I'd, mm. I'd absolutely love it. 
we do have a, a, a couple of live recordings, don't we? Um, yeah. But we we might wait. Live stream. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, and there's the live stream one as well. Like, but we might wait and do it do it nice and proper. But um, that's that's cool that you asked because I was only actually thinking about that during the week. I was like, you know, um, to get the real essence of of, yeah. of what we are. Because uh, we've we've all played in bands before. I mean, I can't speak for for, for the guys, but um, I've, I've played in a number of bands, but I haven't on stage. I, I haven't felt the energy that I that I felt with these two guys. Um, it's the best live sort of feeling I've ever had on stage. It's just <laughs> pure energy. I can't stop smiling when I'm on stage. I can't, st- yeah. can't stop smiling when I'm when I'm in here. <laughs> except, except when I'm making mistakes like tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, like uh, a lot of people think, oh, you're in a big, heavy band and you're screaming and shouting. You must be all moody. So you're like, if you're, <laughs> I often watch bands on stage and they're not smiling, they're not enjoying themselves. I'm like, what are you doing this for, man? You know, like, it's it's the most amazing thing that you could possibly be doing. You'd be playing music with your mates. And if you happen to have a crowd watching you and you're on a nice stage with people working to make you sound good it's the best crack mm-hmm. i can't i can't not smile even if i'm <laughs> playing a big heavy song whoa i'm like yeah. <laughs> whoa Cause, yeah because because we're, <laughs> we're very we're very fortunate to be able to play on stage you know and it, and, it, and you, you've got to got to give that thanks back by giving it your best and sometimes i watch bands and they're not they're not giving it 100 percent, no. and you just wonder why is that especially now because you know, gigs are, are almost like a, a rarity now. Like there's very few uh, gigs going. Well, it's picked up the pace, but like for a long time, nobody gigged. I still see bands coming out now saying that, oh, it's our first gig in two years. Yeah. You know, <laughs> every week you see a band that a band that would have been very active. Oh, it's our first gig in two years. I'm like, fucking hell, man. It's like I, if I, I mean, if I was still waiting, I. I I would Yeah, <laughs> I'd be even more be big bonkers. Yeah, <laughs> be worse than I already am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking hell. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, once I, I'm the kind of person where once I hear a really good album, I just keep playing on repeat because I, I I'm well and truly at, I'm well and truly as probably Ren would know, I'm an album guy. Always have been. Like I prefer to listen to albums start to finish. In my head, it's like. The way I see it, it's like it's like a band or an artist spent all their time and effort to make a project for you. You may as well see it through to the end. To me, it's like disrespectful if you don't do that. It's like, dude, you, you can't just pick and choose singles when they made a whole album. Like, fair enough, listen to it once. If it sucks, singles, whatever. But at least, yeah. at least one time, take it through. It's just like so. As soon as I heard this in order, <laughs> it was like really good, and I was like, and th- and then I swear, the first time I listened to this album. The, the next thing I did was listen to it again. I was at work. I, I got there two hours early, as I always do. And I put this on. I finished it, played it again. <laughs> I remember. I remember the day. So um, this thing never ceases to amaze me. It's just like, it's everything you'd want from a, a Viking metal album. You've got, you know, the metal side. You've got the catchy songs. You've got the great instrumentation. And also, as I, as I said earlier, you have the folk Norse influence in the... Um, in the sounds and you know the lyricism's on point it's just like a yeah like really when you think of and like i said um actually actually i said this in the review i wrote for you guys the tales of rune i said at the start i said i said most people who claim to be viking metal are just cosplaying death metalists <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought that was like, a funny uh, thing to say um which is true most of the time that is true so but for you guys to actually actually mean what you say and actually try to be as as perfect as Viking metal as you can be, I think it's a real credit to your guys' progression stylistically and production wise. So yeah, kudos to you guys. There's bro. Thank you. And we even got the boys singing on this album as well. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> yeah how was, so so how was that like for you guys? <laughs> I've, I've never sung before in my life <laughs> and he made me sound good so <laughs> yeah man and i'm singing live too so. it was great crack. it was really good like yeah no i, I love it I, <laughs> I love singing i i've been singing all my life um and i've done uh, i've done a couple of operas with the local operatic society i've done five musicals with the local 
musical society and I've had a bit of vocal training. Not that it shows, but no, I, when I came in, when we came in to do vocals on Braggy, um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I just stuck my head in front of the microphone and just, <laughs> just plowed into it. It was great. No, I, I like it. Yeah, man, it's great because, like, you know, we're doing a lot of vocals uh, live. Um, there's, there's so much extra stuff in the live show, like, um, you know, especially with the vocals. And it's so nice to have, especially with a three piece, for everybody engaged in what's being said. And it's just very powerful. And to have the boys on record as well, it's, it's so <laughs> cool. Like, and I think they did a stellar job. Stellar job for the yep. god of music, Braggy. <laughs> New myths. Ah, shit, well, Jesus. <laughs> My producing work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, by far, on the whole album, your guys' vocals sounded actually good, unlike this piece of shit. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, nah, it was a really good effort. Um, are you guys going to plan? So um, do you think moving forward, there'll be more singing parts for you guys? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be a natural progression. Um, we're we're picking up more yeah. lines when we're practicing um, as as yeah as we learn the lines. I I can I can find little little places where I can support Ren, um, and and Cass is doing the same. Sometimes I'm I'm higher up, and sometimes I'm lower down. And if Ren's moving up and down, I can do the alternate. So we're constantly finding little places to to insert some support there, but it, it, you know harmonies, harmonies are classical. You know they, they they work all the time. You know, I oh, have a nice harmony. Like, yeah. I mean, it is. It's definitely. I, we'll end up like Mastodon where we'll have like three. Well, we won't have four because I'm sure. We have three main singers. Like, actually, Bill doesn't sing in the band. Yeah. So there's no. the, there's the three boys. So we'll all have like our own parts. That's that's <laughs> eventually what I'd like us to be like. You know. You know. Uh, Parents can have the chorus, cast, and I just do all the heavy stuff and make yeah. it easier. I mean, like, although Cass is getting a real mean, heavy voice now, yeah. as well, like, so uh, we've got two, two, we've got two beast monsters Whoa. here, and then, and then, then we've got this nightingale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, maybe, maybe, uh, I might say maybe not nightingale, but maybe a crow. <laughs> well, I can't wait for you guys to break ground to to break ground in a few years with the first ever Viking. Viking quartet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that would sound sick. You guys should do that. <laughs> right, let's try. Let's try. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you. To do it. Okay, right. Let's try that again. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, all right, two Valhalla. One, two, three, four. Two Valhalla. Two Valhalla. Two Valhalla. See, it's easy. <laughs> uh, that's that's already a banger. That's. <laughs> seriously that, that you guys i reckon oh fuck yeah that that's inspired me not that i'm an artist but have you got um so are any of you guys disturbed fans disturbed yeah. fans oh yeah yeah they did the orchestra video didn't they oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. trampling me leg here sorry <laughs> <laughs> i was just thinking i was and yeah. like like obviously at first at first we were doing that as a joke, but I reckon if you there's a song by Disturbed on their Believe album, which is their second album, the very last song, Darkness, it's like a super dark, gloomy, kind of almost a cappella, almost. It's like it sends the album off. And I reckon you guys could actually do like a dark, creepy, not creepy, like a dark quartet, like in like a gloomy atmosphere to like end an album off. That would be sick. Or like an interlude. Yeah, man. That's a great idea. Do you know what? Uh, we, we, where were we cast? Uh, two weeks ago, uh, festival, Stand Hall. Oh, yes. Stand Hall. There, was this, there was this band. What was the guy with the, the cowboy? Casey Dixie. Casey this Yeah, what he said. Um, they, <laughs> they were um, really, they were like a, a rock, a rockabilly rock kind of cunt, uh, cunt cowboy vibe. But there was one song they sang and it was just a cappella. And it was very simple. It was like, uh, something about lead belly and something. Uh, oh no, that's uh, oh, that's a famous here song. Here comes Len Landa Gentry. Oh, oh, Landa Gentry. Yeah. Oh, Landa Gentry. Right. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, they done. Um, oh, you were thinking of the hillbilly guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my point is they done this really cool. Um, the Landa Gentry done this really really cool a cappella 
and the whole audience was singing it back. Oh, and just, uh, oh, and, and just like just a stamp. Oh man, it was so cool. So like you know, funny you should you should uh, think of that. It, it was kind of an idea that we were thinking. So we might have like you know, um, obviously you know back you know we will we will rock you. you know you can't beat that stuff. So like all that kind of stuff. Just let the let the crowd get involved and stuff and. Ah, we might have something like that. It'd be like, it'd be like, welcome to, welcome to Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be cool. It's a great idea, Morgan, because I, I would, I would love to be up on the front of the stage with these two guys, and maybe just with Lord Tom, and two huge bloody sticks just battering, <laughs> battering the shit out of his floor, Tom, and then the three of us just singing, you know. It would be it would be cool. Yeah, definitely. We might yeah, we might pull that out when we're on tour with Vader. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, just drop it. Well drop it after later. um <laughs> after we're done with the interview, I'll 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 send you a YouTube link to that song to see what I mean. Oh, it's like super dark. Um quite a good thing. Yeah, anyway, it's a good song. But yeah, like I said, great album. Um I'm excited to see what you guys have in the future. Hopefully a live show coming up, a uh, live album. And yeah. you know. It's it's so cool because I get to um, see your guys' progress from s- since Sagas because you know I've been talking to at least Ren since since maybe last year. I mean, not like not as close as we are now, but I remember you just I'm pretty sure I just added you randomly last year, and then you know I and then Sean was always telling me literally um, Big Sean was always telling me like oh. Ren's, Ren's music is class. Ren, Ren's music is great. And then I'm like, I agree. And then Sagas came out and then and then I wrote that review and then things yeah. just went from there. But, and then, no, that, that's right. We did a secret interview that I didn't tell anyone about and then we uploaded it. Yeah, it was cool. But yeah, so yeah. what I'm saying is I'm so, you know, it's so cool that I get to see the progress from all the way back then to now and like all the anticipation in between. And um, I just can't wait for what you guys are going to do next. And that leaves me on this note, and this is going to be a fun one because all three of you are here. If all three of you were stuck on a desert island with only one album to take with you, each of you, which one would it be? Oh, wow. Well, we'd have to, well, I mean, you like... Did, you did this the last time you... Yeah, played. yeah. Well, the question. okay, wait. The last no, time I'm I said not. overrated, underrated. Yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. We, we both picked the Metallica album. You said, you said the Black album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I probably wouldn't say that. <laughs> I can just imagine <laughs> saying something about that snare or something. Um, okay, Desert Island. Uh, one album. One album to rule the ball. Shy. Um, well, I mean, it would. It would, the easy answer would be, you know, one of each of the trilogies. So we'd have the whole, yeah. you know, <laughs> trilogy of all the. Berserker album, but no, that. What do you think, Cass? I mean, yeah, Cass, what's your. your, your he's, my he's, albums will be very not metal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it doesn't you, have to you be. You want to chill out on a desert thing. island. Like, yeah. you want to be like, you know, some Bob Marley or something, like just relaxing and taking yeah. in the rays. Uh, might, might inspire some <laughs> reggae Viking stuff. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to look around. I've no, well, actually, no, I, I know what it is for me anyway. Uh, it's a Richie Cotton album, anyway, definitely. I mean, um, if I only had Richie Cotton music, I'd be, I'd be happy out like, um, Salt, Salted Earth, maybe, or yeah, Richie Cotton's greatest hits. Boom, there you go. That's me, lads. <laughs> very, very um, Dead Wing, Porky Pantry, nice. Nice. Um, I want to say I'm um, Bing Crosby's greatest hits. Samantha Mumbo's greatest hits. Samantha Mumbo's greatest hits. Not that bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Oh my God. I yeah. was going to say the match with Great Little Body Bible. Oh, yeah. that's good. What? You're thinking yes. Great Little Swite album because you'll have 28 songs. Yeah. So. Yeah, mm. funny, <laughs> funny you've got Abbey Road in the top corner, bro, and I have that exact ah. picture <laughs> back here as well. Like, um, yeah, I mean Abbey Road would have been a good one as well. What did I say? A oh, Richie Cotton. Ah, <laughs> ah, super Richie. Well, one of my choices definitely 
would be the album. Let's see. No, this. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, right. From last week. <laughs> this week. Um, yeah. Somebody else this week. yeah. Uh, no, for me. <laughs> very clever. <laughs> if, you know, the two albums I always go back and forth on, like, to me, this is a hot. To me, these two albums are like my biggest ultimatum in history. Like, I could never choose between which one's better to take with me. And that, for, for me, it's always the same two albums, which I brought, I brought it up when we talked last time. But Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and Led Zeppelin Four. Those two are my perfect albums. Like, like yeah. See, I, I like I like Sabbath Four. I think Sabbath Four is. Yeah, actually, four, five, and six—that that, that was an amazing run. Uh, it's all good stuff. Like Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, is astonishing. Album. Any any Sabbath yeah. would do on a desert island, I'm sure. Ozzy could sing it. I, I would take I would take Sabbath before Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, he's he's got he's gonna fight me afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no Zeppelin, man. <laughs> <laughs> Although Corbin had a go at me today about Zeppelin as well. Like we won't tell anybody because we were on a surprise. But like yeah. we had a, I mean obviously I love Zeppelin, but we had a little barney about Zeppelin earlier on. I tell he's liar. <laughs> um, this is off camera talk now, people. Ah, <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty sure the audiences out there can now get a better inside better, better perspective on tales of rune and it's definitely an album of it's definitely an album i've been pushing i've been pushing this album to everyone like you know so any metal contacts i have no matter how big or small i have i've been pushing this album fucking symphony x i've sent this to tears for fears i mean yeah no, I, I, I don't know if you listen to it but okay i sent it to him i sent yeah. it to everyone i can um it's a fantastic album and i hope i hope I can push the whole world across the world to hear it. And um, I can't wait for you guys next one. Well, listen, but uh, I mean, we're, we say it all the time. You know, we really appreciate everything that you do. I mean, you know, aside from, uh, you know, being mates and stuff like, you know, with the band, the connection and stuff and everything yeah. that you're doing, like. Oh, we totally appreciate it, man. We, and we know it takes time and you're busy. So look, we really, really, really appreciate, appreciate it. I mean, this this time next year we'll have another album. It'll be a, it'll be the Viking quadrilogy. <laughs> the quadrilogy. The quadrilogy. <laughs> Tales um, of quadrilogy. <laughs> but no, we we appreciate your support, Norman. Really, really much. You're real, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy to do it. You know, and um, I don't have anything planned on today. You guys were my plans. So <laughs> after so that, sorry. I got a whole day free. Uh, really we'll good. do another interview later on, will we? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, uh, you, well, you have to start. You yeah. have to start your work first. You you started promoting Tales of Rune that sagas came out. Yeah. So now you've got to start promoting the banking yeah. banking journals. The banking <laughs> journals, yeah. You have to start now. <laughs> do you know what the funny thing is that we do actually have a title for the next album, but we haven't fully agreed on it. But there is a working title, so like you know. Yeah, hopefully. What is you know, it? It all. Um, oh come on! All right, all right. It's a uh, Midgar to Asgard. There's a whole story behind the album, before, but that might be the album after that. You know, like it might be this one. We, we haven't decided. We'll see. But um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it all. Do you know what it is? It's like uh, I would keep on plowing and plowing and recording and recording, and I'm just I'm just glad that I have a couple of sensible people around me to kind of keep uh you know, take your time with things and do it in the, the proper order and whatnot. And it's great. We have a great, we have a great team. Before we go, I want to just thank everybody for everything that's been going on lately. Because the last, like, I don't know, when we were done the podcast uh, this week and even last week, the giddiness was just stupid. Like, but when, like we were chatting beforehand and talking about what's been going on, like you've been doing really well, bro. All your interviews and everything that you're doing yeah, amazing. Is, is amazing. We, we, we do it. I mean, what the hell? Joey I mean, Belladonna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've been listening to Joey Belladonna for 30 years, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I mean, like between that and like, I'm a, I've always been a huge artillery fan. To be able to talk to Michael, Bastom, Dahl, it, that was a pleasure. Like what a dude. And then, 
Um, obviously one of my favourites, Harry from Tear as well. Like, and ah, it's just been brilliant. Like on on your side of things, it's been absolutely excellent. And then the stuff that's been going on with us, uh, the team that we have is excellent. We have, you know, our good Shield Maiden ladies are massive, massive support there. We've got um our management Taja and Kimo are just all the time working hard for us. And then OG Big Sean from United Music Mafia Big Sean. <laughs> and Frank, Frank Beaver, man, and he Sam. does so much. And Sam and oh, the whole crew over there, they do so much every day for us. And you as well, bro. And every, it's just, it's an, it's, you know what, we're honored. It's unreal that uh, these three Vikings up in the hills of Donegal are uh, getting to work with so many cool people from all over the world. And, um, you know, we have some really big things coming up and things that we are planning and hoping that we will get to announce and throw it out there. And I, I just want to say thank you to Black Star, to Cassidy's Guitars, um, to Skull Strings, to Terence's Drum in, Guys. In Sydney? Yeah. In <laughs> Sydney as well, man. So, like, um, anybody who's got uh, Viking Lifestyles, um, you know, we've just been very fortunate to have most badass cool people around us and uh it's um you know let's just see what happens next year man it's uh i mean you know you know yourself in life you always want to top your your previous uh work or you know year next year is going to be an exciting year bro for all of us for all yeah. of us i can't wait so thank you everybody thank you heathen tribe <laughs> you know actually that's the name apparently of the new of the new Amon Amarath album, The Heathen Tribe. <laughs> Is it? Something like that. You know yeah. They had heathen. a single yeah, they had a single um uh, The Great Heathen Army. That's yeah, what that's what it's called. The Great Heathen Army. And Tyr yeah. have a group now. I don't know, I don't know who took it from where, but like Tyr have a, a really cool group for people to go on and look on. Um uh it's just all about Tyr, uh all their music. It's called the the Great Heathen Army. It, that's the name of their group, or something something on those lines, anyway. So I don't know whether they're they're, you know, they they're most likely friends and they're discussing this kind of stuff together and they like to bounce off each other ideas. But yes, our Heathen Tribe are the best followers in the world, no doubt. So and, thank you, everyone. And I was I was I was just gonna say one thing we have gotta make sure happens for you guys in the future is getting connected with Randy Burns. We can fucking oh, set that up. Well, yeah. Randy, if you're listening to this, we're, we're, we're working on the new album. And uh, yes, please produce it. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, he's, he's worked with some amazing artists. Ah, Megadeth, the whole boys, yeah, the whole lot. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. So, like, the, the we're going from strength to strength. And, and, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm at an award ceremony. Like, we'll, ju we'll just use this kind of chorus as, like, an award. <laughs> I just, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'd just like to thank, <laughs> thank everybody for, for, for everything you've done for us. This is just like that's a 99 cent can of beer. <laughs> <that. laughs> nah, I'm not even drinking. I'm on I'm on the I'm on the caffeine. He, he's not gonna spend the night. Well no. one thing I gotta say to the band um is how you put up with this guy. 24 seven on me. I, I put up with them once a week and already as soon as I saw his face this morning, I was like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> was these like, I was so, thinking my missus every, every day with her, like <laughs> I look at I look in the mirror every day I'm like shit man, I have to be with you. <laughs> ah sure listen. Good times. I wish I was joking. Ah, good times. No. <laughs> I wish um, I was joking. <laughs> um no nah, this has been great i'm gonna work with this asap um put it on youtube and i'll send it to you guys i'll obviously promote it in the meantime hope you guys have a good day and check out which i'll upload in a minute i i did an interview with with the australian supergroup remains yesterday very straightforward guy which um can be very interesting to interview at times but uh, he was real nice real cool and um i haven't heard of the band until now but their music comes out mid uh, a few hours ago it came out midnight it's 7 53 in the morning here so it's midnight seven hours ago eight hours ago. so yeah the album's out um he was a cool guy so yeah check that out in the meantime and i'll upload and edit this and um get 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 friends i 
get Ren's ugly mug out of the favor. We just have you two. Um, I'll edit you completely. And um, yeah, let's, let's make this interview presentable, you know? Yeah, man, that's it. Like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's been good. Thanks I'll get this right. sorted ASAP. And in the meantime, it's night time, I imagine, for you guys, right? Night time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you guys have a good night, and I will sort this out on my end. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks. All right, have a good one, guys. Thank you, sir, bro.